My name is Peter Bruninger, and your name is? Charles Kermis. Charles, how are you? Uh, the Mad Scientist is doing great. We just came back <laughs> from a show in London, mm -hmm. left on Sunday, went to a show in Vancouver on Monday, Tuesday, and arrived last night at midnight to set up here all by my lonesome because my staff are stuck in traffic or they're lazy. No, a little humor. Anyways, we're here to show you how we restore records. We okay. don't clean them. Okay, here we go. Okay, so there's something that's very important. Ultrasonics have been around for a long time. People in the industry, as audiophiles, trust a lot of people that say we clean records ultrasonically. And I mean we, as people that have ultrasonic machines. That is incorrect. An ultrasonic by itself cannot clean a record. Why? This is your record that you picked up that you wanted to test on. Yes. So very good. It's a uh, dead condense, very nice. This, all records are made out of PVC. PVC, if you pour water on it, will roll. So PVC rejects water. How do ultrasonics work? Ultrasonics create a bubble, a bubble rises. When the bubble explodes, called cavitation, it's not the bubble that cleans the record. It creates, in our case, a 500 mile an hour wave that hits the record. If you have a record, PVC, that in fact repels water, you're not really doing good service with your cleaning system. So in our tank that we all use as a wetting agent, we have nearly two gallons of distilled water okay. and 1.4 ounces of alcohol. We use that as a basic degreaser just for your fingerprints. That's all it can do. It cannot go in the grooves, it cannot restore anything. People that say, oh, put in one gallon of alcohol, you know, 99%, and two gallons or three gallons or four of distilled water, you're removing the plasticizer of the eight of the record. So as your record is played and the diamond stylus hits your record, you're eating your record because you've affected the plasticizer. Okay. There's a lot of people that haven't done anything with chemistry. We've spent three years learning why a $5,000 system doesn't wash anything. I might as well buy a little machine for $99. It's the same end result. So we like restoring it. Okay. So the first cycle is we put the record in the machine and we do two LPs at a time. We can do a 10 inch, a shellac record, as well as a 45 RPM all simultaneously. The first cycle is basically just removing some of the surface grease and some of the surface silic acids when a record is being made. Everyone thought I was nuts. They say, oh yeah, well, yeah, I, I go to a record company and they, they don't spray PAM on the, on the pressing. Of course not. They take a biscuit or a hockey puck of PVC. It has a label on both sides. It's put in a press, and you can see this on our website. It's put in a press, pressure is applied, and out pops a record that's this thin. Okay. During the process, to unpop it, you have silic acid that comes up on all eight services. Two, two inside the hole, two, 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 two four, uh, and on the edges on both sides. So that's where your your uh, your remnant is, your your restore agent. So if you take that brand new record home and you play it, you're actually harming your record. Why? Your stylus generates heat. The record isn't perfectly clean, and what happens is you have micro dust that then gets spot welded, and that answers the question. Yeah. When you're playing your first brand new record, side A, ah, oh, pop here, a pop there. Then afterwards, go to side B, oh, maybe a pop. You go back to A, oh, I love track two, put it in there, more pops. What did you do? Even if you use the carbon brush, you have micro dust that's caught in that greasy release agent. So that's what we're doing right now. We're releasing that. So, so that's the rule of thumb to start off with good records. Obviously, you know, I've been collecting records since the 60s, and I never understood that, never knew that, no one taught me that. And then I built my own tube amplifiers and whatever, and my cables and speakers and popular mechanics showed you how to make a nice case. Well, long story short, I listened to boomy mu music in those days. So when you apply all these sprays, and you, I have a VPI machine, 16, sorry to say it, I, just, I should have said just a vacuum I machine, but I have one. It took me nine, five minute cycles to clean all the stuff I put on my records. Because those systems leave residues, they don't polish. So I'm gonna speed this up here, so okay. this is two minutes. I'm not worried about the degrease because I wanna restore your record. Okay. So the machine at five minutes stops, 
It resets to five minutes. I take the record out. Obviously, I have my rabbit cloth right next to me so that I don't ruin my wife's wood floors. So come on over to my workstation. Excuse me, we're coming into the workstation. There we go. Okay, and here we are. What happens is now I put this on and I have uh, a pad which suspends the record off a of microfiber. Okay. Never use microfibers because they are, even they say lint free, they're never lint free. So this is suspended and I take our surfactant. Again, we talked about what the alcohol was. This is water soluble, very important. It is PVC friendly, very important. It is anti-static. Engineers, people in me in the electronics business, we use it as an antifungal, anti-static agent. So now what I do is I spread it on the record, 12 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and then I use the goat-haired brush that comes with the system, and I apply it. Oh my God! Look at that. This is, you have not even, oh my God, I'm, I'm, one of your colleagues, Mr. Fremer comments, we normally never see this on a record on the first shot. This record is being severely contaminated by whatever process was used before, including fungal agents that we saw. So that simple ultrasonic bath that we were really looking at removing the grease of, uh, uh, the, the, the grease of has softened that side. But wait a minute, what did I just see here? Less white stuff coming out. So this now leads me, as someone that works with the product for a long time, someone used a vacuum or a nitty gritty or whatever system on side number one over side number two because the side number one either had more noise yep. or they loved the music and they played it. So side one has been uh, undergone another process. And normally we never see that in the first application. Okay. So now we're going to go, go back, back to our res restoration system. And we're going to go and put this back into the same system. And we're going to allow now the ultrasonic to take full advantage of what we put into the grooves. So now while that cavitating wave is hitting, we're now being attracted to what's inside the grooves. So this will go on for a five minute cycle. Okay. Uh, normally what I do is uh, obviously, uh, since this is also kind of informational, I can stack a record. So every minute I put another record in. So and I don't have to wait. how many records? In? I see. Yeah, so I can do two records, two LPs, okay. and a 10 inch shellac record, okay. and as well as also a 45. Okay. Now one of the things that we can do, because we've tuned the ultrasonic frequency with the right power, and the right spacing, and obviously you don't see skewer so we're not harming the record this record is worth close to a hundred thousand US dollars mm -hmm. this is a record that came from KDKA <laughs> the oldest radio station in Pittsburgh and I found it in their transmitter site among a thousand other records it was full of fungus it was brown it's a glass record you cannot clean shellac and you cannot clean glass records with either alcohol or ultrasonics we can in our mix and in our potion we restored the system and on the website we have a left channel and a right channel rendition by a four second delay and it's a glass record only made to run maybe five or six times what the studio people did during the day they brought in the announcer they recorded this and then they only used it twice on the third uh, sorry 15th and 16th of march in 1962 this was broadcast and it's les rollins at wqed was talking about uh, sorry, at KDKA, talking about government funding going away from public radio. This is now a historical document. And the guys at night had fun because they recorded nasty things on the, other, on the flip side. So that is a glass record. So here, I'm just going to uh, speed up the process here. In theory, five minutes is yeah, over. Okay. I'm going to take this out. Okay. Okay, bring this back out again, back to the workstation here. Okay, here we go, guys. There we go. And now we're going to go, and again, you saw water is being repelled off the record. So now we need to put another surfactant in. And now, uh, ah, by the way, what I do is I, I do 
use mist and I do clean my goat hair brush between applications. See there's less white appearing, mm -hmm. it's evaporating quickly. Ah, a little more down here. What happened down here? Hmm, this was also under an ultrasonic process with the machine where the water went down and then the water went down then the machine started to turn the record and then by turning the record it then dried on the lower half of the record whatever was in the tank so someone that says we keep water and stuff in their tank for a hundred records absolute garbage yeah, absolute garbage <laughs> it's, it's so so we found out one record was, was cleaned with uh, you know a, uh, a you know a vacuum or a, or a brushing system and then now after the first stripping down this was also cleaned by a very famous ultrasonic system here it is again so that's the yeah, bottom section yeah, I see that. so we this so I know that this was cleaned by two different processors so I want to Again, just brush this in now. Doesn't matter if it has contaminants on there. I want it right now because they're all soluble within my system. And we're going to put it back into the machine for our uh, second uh, five minute cycle using surfactant. There we go, start her up. Now, something's very important in ultrasonics don't use commercial. There are a lot of do it yourself kits. People ruin very expensive records thinking that everyone's honest. Ultrasonics generate heat. So the key critical element is to have a system that does not heat your water. The water heats by itself during the collapsing of the bubbles. So I don't have an issue with that, but we have an alarm that when we hit 95 degrees, we say you have another five minutes to clean a cycle. Because anything over 105 degrees warps your records. Warp your records, warp your grooves, and that damages. Other ultrasonics, the higher frequency, that's another issue of people not understanding. It's because they read only half of it. Oh yeah, 125 kilohertz. Yes, that cleans very well. Well, you have to take a look again at the ultrasonic engineering information from commercial manufacturers. Yes, it cleans well. Why? The bubbles are small. Great. The bubbles explode. Even better. The bubbles have a velocity of 900 miles an hour. 10,000 A units. What does that do? It sandblasts your fragile record. Oh, interesting. It's made for medical instruments. When you go and get an examination, I don't want your DNA mixing with my DNA because the doctor didn't use the right ultrasonic frequency to clean. 125, yes, not 35. Certainly not 25. Those systems are, the wave is too small, doesn't clean anything. So there's a lot of information that's needed because you can sandblast your records. So here we are, you know, we're, uh, we're, uh, we're, we're in uh, cycle two of the uh, five minutes surfactant, or basically 15 minutes is going to be elapsed because the first one was a degreasing, uh, degreasing agent and just getting everything kind of wet. And again, the surfactant allows an extra electron, so we now allow the washing action to really take place. And since this is a record that you're going to be working with, I want to not cut corners now in the last two steps because I want to give you a very nice finished product. Good, we'll let that play through and we'll cut back to you in just a minute. Very okay. good, perfect. Very good. Are back. very good, so now we've we finished our second five minute cycle using the surfactant and just as we have uh, interested audio files here, we're going to explain again what we're kind of now doing. We're bringing this back to our workstation and again you see it's dry. I, I, if you're using a sonic only with distilled water, it'll never clean anything. It'll clean the surface a bit, but vinyl rejects water. That's why we need to use a surfactant again. So this is now the third application of surfactant. The first one we said, wow, we got a lot of white paste. We never had that before, ever, ever, ever. So that record has been cleaned a lot of times because none of the cleaning systems have removed all the prior cleanings. or the release agent from the machine. So now I put this in here. Very good. Put this in. Look at that. Oh yeah. Look, no more paste. No more paste. This side is ready for its last five minutes. This, everyone else says, put it in a machine for five minutes. The green light comes on, it's done. Is it clean? I don't know. Shiny records, is it clean? I don't know. I don't know what's in the grooves. In fact, by cleaning, we had a fellow here earlier today 
that bought a record that his mom loved. She's no longer there. He found it and he brought it here and um, someone put polish on it in the record store to make it look good and we found it. Look at that. Look at that. Look. Just remember this this had a, this had some sort of a an ultrasonic on the bottom here but this is not we don't have that white paste anymore. Look at that. So basically now this is ready for the last five minute cycle. Okay, here we go. So this is the visual verification, not just saying, oh, manufacturer says one cycle and you're done. Or you're on your dippy system there and you're tired of, you know, washing. There we go. So back into the restoration system and back for another five minutes. And then we'll be done. Okay, we'll come back in five minutes. Five minutes. Ready in five minutes. We're counting down now. We're almost at zero. Four, three, two, one. Very good. There we go. Little beat. Take the record out. When we talked about the water, the water drips all the way down and then ends up right at, at the bottom. So here, just a bit. Just, just a, a bit of winter. Okay. Okay, good. So here, this record, we are finished cleaning. We are finished cleaning this record. What do I do? In the 1950s and 1960s, record custodians all agreed that you need to remove mechanically any agent you use to clean the records. And the agents that we talked about before, the little bit of alcohol with a small percentage, the uh, Diol-2, which we talked about as a surfactant, all were named in the 50s and the 60s by all the record custodians of what to do. We've missed all that. We have companies that will not put on the label what's in their bottle. And they're all enzymes, they're not PVC friendly. They, they, they ruin the plasticizer. So all I do is I use, on the work table, I use my optician's cloth, comes with the system, okay? Take it over on the other side, do the same thing. Use the optician's cloth. The optician's cloth, again, people may say, oh, it's not air drying. I don't want to dry what, oh, by the way, I missed a step. I have a little distilled water that I spray again at 12, uh, yeah. 4, and 8 o'clock. It's on our training video. Okay. So you do that because whatever is left, I still want off. So you just polish it a bit. Okay. And then we resurrected back in the 1960s. There was a company in England that made the parastatic felt, Dr. Watts. I still have my original one I bought in high school in 1971. It was a tube. It had a felt. And inside the tube, you had a little foam where you put a little water on there just to moisten it. It was an anti-static felt. Well, we're using it not for necessarily anti-static. We're using it because the felt design gets into the grooves. So now this is my last, my last treatment of this record. Is okay. there anything on that brush? No, right nothing, now? no, nothing. Nothing on that right. brush. Just, uh, just so the felt. This is your calling, polishing it up. This is just my brush going over. I finished. So now. This is as virgin a record I can get, even removing the release agents from the pressing process from the factory. So this, ha this doesn't have fungus. We have a clean groove. The needle will sit all the way down properly in the groove with good contacts on the left and right side. And now you'll see the breath of the music and the floor level will come up. The noise level will go down, the background noise. There is something to do before playing it. We put it on a turntable. I'm not going to go and rinse the brush because we're on tape. I have another brush. I take the same antifungal agent, the same surfactant, and I just at arm's length, that's all. A little mist. Oh. Hmm. So now the record is spinning on the turntable and I go across the grooves. Anti-static, it removes static off the record. We use it in electronics, diol too. And at the same time, fungus will not come and seek out the sugar molecule. Everyone laughs at me. There is a sugar element in PVC. That's why you don't have fungus growing on glass in Seattle. You have fungus growing on PVC roofing and walls and windows in Seattle. Okay, so, so and what's worse is now many PVC companies are looking at reducing or increasing costs, uh, sorry, uh, 
increasing profits, so they're putting soybean materials in there. So I'm going to just do this, okay? Okay. I, I'm, I'm kind of, this isn't the right way to do it. Right. But I'm just giving you the final polishing touch on the record. Okay, and I'm going to do that on both sides. And then I either play it or I put it in a sleeve that is non-PVC. You want one that is antifungal. And you need to watch out because a lot of people put a little thing, say it is antifungal, antistatic, and guess what? Rice paper. Well, you don't want any kind of paper to touch your record, let alone plastic that is uh, PVC. So there you go. Okay. That's done. Now, play it or put it. Always put it in a new sleeve. But there's something very important. Don't throw your sleeves away. Okay? Don't put this back into your record. What you do is take a 3M post-it note and write down the record catalog number, the name, put it on the white printed liner, only the white printed liner, not the ones that are not printed, because they're valuable, and put it in a box somewhere. So when your estate sells your record collection, or you yourself are trying to sell it to someone, you give them the original sleeve, but no contact with this. So that's it. Okay. Very good. Well, Charles, thank you very much for this very robust demonstration of your record cleaning process. I'm restoration. Very, I'm, restoration. I stand corrected. Absolutely. Record restoration system. Absolutely by, right. By Charles Kermis. Kermis Audio. Kermis Audio, very based good. in Denver, Colorado. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And see you at another show. Okay. See you then. Very good. We made it through this one. Yep. <laughs> Bye.